uh, the draft WCD limits. Um, we are continuing with our pact phase two and we are at 5.1 and this is just a summary video of our discussion during our class session yesterday. So we've looked at uh, 5.1.1. Please make sure that you number your pages as 5.1.1, 5.1.2, 5.1.3 and have those at the top left hand corner of every single page or at the bottom but it needs to be numbered. So just coming back to last week we, we did a floor plan and we drew to a suitable scale of 1 is to 75 which is basically a copy of your designs, the selected design. And um, what I forgot to look at is um, two things which I want to share with you very quickly. Um, if you go to our rubric, it's important that you read through the rubric and see whether you have complied with all the different requirements. Uh, let's look at that rubric. Quickly. So here you will see that uh, there must be a direct correlation with the selected free and solution. So that will give you two marks, very importantly that you have included all the external and internal walls, the veranda and with the pergola and roof line. That's very important and maybe I just need to touch on that as well. Uh, and then of course you need to have all the doors including the multi-panel sliding door and windows which will give you two marks, all the permanent fixtures. This is important which I need to touch on which is your electrical fittings and the wiring layout like you've done in your test or any other civil activity. And then also what I need to touch on which would be the wastewater disposal system, which is the sewer line. Then the rest of it is very um, obvious, your title, your labels, your notes, your details I'm mentioning, your hatching detail, and you need to add in a cutting line as well, and you need to have a suitable scale, which you need to indicate with your north point which needs to be there as well. So you will find here in your site plan which is part of the PAT document that that is the north point symbol that you will see here. Depends on how you are going to place your building that will determine the direction of the north point which you will show anywhere on your final design. Now I've taken the liberty of selecting someone's design and just to show you what you need to do so you've got to visit every single venue and just place in your electrical symbols. Let's uh, start in the bathroom and I just want to give you an example. Your electrical symbols will probably be when you enter the bathroom here there's going to be a light switch here which you're going to have like that and then in every single unit you might have a normal ceiling mounted light which you can place like that in there and then of course in this communal section here you might have two or three fluorescent lights which will light up that area nicely and just keep in mind that you need to write here two times 45 as well at each of the fluorescent lights and then of course that goes there and then it continues till there. You can have a double one here if you want to which goes from there to there to there to that side and connecting all the lights inside. And so you can proceed to any other venue and place in the lights as well. If you have the museum preferably you're going to have quite a few fluorescent lights in here evenly spaced to light up this venue in all areas so I'm going to for example place four of these and it doesn't matter whether you have it in a vertical position or whether you have it in a horizontal position um, I'm going to place my switch maybe over there so that it's away from the window and there I'm going to place my light switch and connect it from there to there connect it from there to there that goes there and that's how you're going to light. Remember also to add wall sockets. So at various 
respective points you're going to have a wall socket which simply looks like that maybe one on that side and maybe one on this side here please get the symbols correct as, as they would be in the SANS document and then of course um, you can have maybe some um, lighting on the outside here which is going to be uh, under the pergola so I'm going to have just a normal wall mounted light there maybe one above here which would be the three panel sliding door and maybe one here which is this above the window and then of course that could be linked to a switch that we could put perhaps on this side here or it can be part of the switch that we have here where you have a double and then you're just going to connect 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 and then inside here you are going to have all your your fluorescent lights evenly spaced like that I'm going to do three of them I'm doing it very roughly but of course you are going to do it extremely neat because this is your final and keep in mind that they all should be the same size when once you start with one you can find where you're going to have your switch and of course you're going to have that connection going from one to the other and also placed a few wall sockets somewhere in the venue uh, it doesn't matter where you do it but it has to be at the respective points um, make sure there is outside lighting available um, especially when there's uh, an entrance for example I will put a light here and I will put an outside wall mounted light there which will connect with a double switch here and there as well learners I'm doing it in red but keep in mind that that is only for explanation purposes you must do yours in pencil everything here must be in pencil do not use any other color besides pencil and then just to show you the uh, sewer line when you do a sewer line you have to go where the bathrooms are situated so there are one two three bathrooms so you can either have a pipe that goes underneath here that comes out here alternatively you can have one coming out from each individual and going that way let me give you two options um, and I'm going to use different colors for the two options but keep in mind this is only for explanation purposes so the green is going to be for one option we I'm going to use my individual one where it comes out like that is the line coming out from every single bathroom like that and then of course I am going to connect that there right but keep in mind the line has to be a long short long short long short long short long short line it has to be a chain line you also need to extend it a little bit further this way so that you can have an RE here which is a rotting eye and at each of these respective junctions you are going to have an IE or an IC one of the two you can choose but you need to write them in IC or IE each one of these will be a dot and that will represent an inspection eye or an inspection chamber and then on the line you just need to show an arrow because that shows the direction of flow that is now a sewer line where you have individual pipes coming out into a main pipe the rotting eye being the start of the sewer system alternatively in blue you can have a pipe that goes underneath but you're not going to show it you're just going to show how it comes out here remember long short long short and you can take it slightly past here and then of course you are going to take that this way long short long short long short now 
that is going to be your IE or alternatively your IC which is your inspection I or your inspection chamber the start of your pipeline which is your rodding I which is going to be there and here you're just going to show me an arrow on that line which indicates the direction of the flow so one of the two you can use depends on where your bathrooms are situated but you need to show me that to be able to get the mark And then finally, if we look at the direction symbol, remember your direction symbol is like this. And that would be your north here. I'm just drawing it roughly in that corner over here, as, as you can see. But if, you're, if you are going to position your house like that, then obviously you need to take that symbol as is across and place it on here and that is what you're going to do and you are going to use your circle template which I am just finding quickly so my circle template is going to be used and I'm going to use any of the circles here which uh, I will draw there and then the angle that we have of course is a 45 deg degree angle like that there and I will have a 45 going this way and of course just to show the arrow like that there be able to show the north direction symbol okay so if you're going to have it like that it has to change so that it shows that way now if you look at 5.1.2 and this is what we're going to do this week two elevations now uh, very importantly it must be drawn to the same scale which is 1 is to 75 as a floor plan with one elevation including the front entrance of the museum the front entrance of the museum this is bold printed very importantly and the other including a side view of the museum so any side but one must be the front of the museum both views must also show the veranda as well as the wooden pergolas it is recommended that you draw the elevations that would be required for the two-point perspective I'm going to sample to give you an idea of what and how you need to approach this part of your design and from the sample, you need to be able to go to your design and sort of just figure out your two views which you are going to do. Now before you start, you have to look at your design. And like I said, I'm going to sample this one again. And the first thing I need to determine is where is my front entrance of my museum, which is here. So that is going to be my primary elevation a view from this side and then I can take any other view and preferably this view over here as my secondary elevation so that view which shows my front entrance including my pergola and this view over here which will also show part of my pergola as well my veranda and my stoop which I will see here so those are the two views which I'm going to draw you need to take into consideration how the roof lines are situated so you'll be able to so that those can be able to assist you in getting your roof properly done so i'm going to remove this i'm going to start with drawing a line right here which is in the middle of my page that's going to be my first line over there and i'm going to draw another line towards the bottom of my page right here now those lines are a representation of the natural ground level which I have and everything above that will be drawn so that view here which is my primary view which will be drawn right here seen from that arrow and this view over here will be drawn at the bottom seen from that arrow and to assist me by doing so I'm going to paste this right here on top and project my lines down to be able to formulate exactly where my wall ends are going to be and where my line of my, and where my lines of my roof will be and to be able to put this together as two elevations 
let me do a sample and watch carefully how I project my lines down to be able to formulate the two elevations.
then basically covers your northeast elevation, which is the one here on top, and at the bottom your north your northwest elevation. You will see that the gradient is one is to forty, which is the slope in which the water will run away in the sewer system. Um, all the dimensions have been given here, but take note of the dimensions, the 50, the 40, the 30, and the degrees here in terms of the dimensions on paper which you need to do. Please put in all of those. Let's check our criteria and see whether we've complied with all the requirements. If we look at 5.1.2, two elevations, we have the prescribed views, one with the entrance to the museum and one with the side view of the museum, which we have. We have all the external walls, the veranda and the pergolas that we have. What we don't have is the museum's Cape Touch facade, and I want to speak to you about that, but we do have the double doors and the sash windows on either side. We have the detail, including frames and all the doors and windows. We've got the gable roof detail, including the rainwater items and then both elevations are drawn to the same scale. Let me just focus on the Cape Dutch facades. Now if you look at facades, these are the facades that we are looking at. I just want to zoom in on that. You will see it is this. The Dutch normally used to build this type of architecture, so we need to include that above your double doors which your which would be your opening to your museum and those are the sash windows so we're talking specifically about that that is the basic front view of it and then of course here is a beautiful picture of what it looks like from the front and then you need to get a you need to design your own Cape Dutch facade and here I've given you examples of what it should be so you can use any one of these or perhaps come up with your own to put in that space um, above your double doors which would be the entrance to the windows. Here you can see that is your pergolas, what pergolas look like and that is what we've drawn in as well. Let me show you an example of how you're going to put in the tape touch facade. So this is where my entrance will be, my double doors and my two sash windows, so I'm going to do it directly above that here. It can be your own design, I'm going to give you an example of what my design looks like and you can design your own.
And that concludes my Cape Touch facade. And I hope you're going to come up with your own creative design.